All right, everybody. Welcome to Flesh and Blood Unseals. We're here with another deck tech. This installment is with Michael Lamar, the uh, man, the myth, the legend, the guy behind the Salty Whale podcast. Michael, what's up, man? Hey, Chris. How you doing? Thanks for having doing me. Doing good. Doing good. So yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your flesh and blood background. I, I, I met you in Vegas. So I know that yeah, you were at, the at Vegas least one calling. Uh, the tales released earlier this year. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I've been flesh and blood since uh, May, April, twenty twenty. A lot of people know me as Salty Whale. I have quite a big uh, collection, but I'm also a pretty big player too. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm top tier, but not not so bad. Uh, I attend a lot of armories. I started the Seattle Flesh and Blood group. Uh, we have one hundred eighty members now. So attended the calling and then uh, did a lot of road nationals last year. And then I got my invite to uh, the nationals in Florida. Sweet. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, got a couple of decks that you wanted to talk about today, right? And uh, maybe we should just hop right into it here. Yeah. So this, this deck was uh, heavily inspired by Steel Fur. Um, he's a British uh, deck builder. Uh Probably still spur, still for speaks. I think is what he goes by. Um, but give you a background on this deck. This deck was really really good um, pre tales meta. It's still good, but it's not top tier deck. And quite a few people have gone over it. So that's why I want to go over this deck, and I want to go over my road nationals deck, which is not as good as this deck. But it's good to know why they're not as good and what's good about it, and to be aware of what Ninja can do, and be aware of maybe what he could do in the future. Or she, whoever we get as a hero. Mm -hmm. um, so to go over this, um, I played this deck and very similar deck in Vegas and Florida. In Vegas, I got top 50th um, overall. And in, um, in Florida, I got 110th. Um, part of the reason why I did not as good in Florida is because I didn't do as well in the draft portion of it. But I think I went 7 and 4. Or something like that. I don't know the exact number in the Nats with this Katsu deck. So mm. overall, it's still a very positive winning streak. Yeah, that. for sure. But it really depends on your matchup, too. Um, but let's go ahead and walk through some of the what's in here, some of the strengths and weaknesses, and who wrecks this deck, and who do you wreck, too. That's like my favorite part right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean... How does this deck nice do against Briar? <laughs> All right, Briar's the, kind of a bitch, but I did beat one in the, the Florida because um, you have the lightning bri bri briar and then you have the um, earth briar. Me personally, I'm more afraid of the earth briar, but we'll get to that in a minute. Sure. So let's go over the equipment first, because I think it's the easiest thing to talk about is um, using the Kadachis. That's pretty straightforward. But you want to get your your chip damage in. You want to get the threat for your mask going, because if you hit two times with that, any other action you play after that could trigger the mask. Uh, people will typically try to block the second one, which is okay, but then you waste a block on them, either equipment or uh, or an action card or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, your your main equipment for most matchups is a heart and cross drop. And why that's preferred over the tunic is it gives you up to two resource discount. And one of the main combo lines you play is the surge and strike combo, which costs two. So essentially, it allows you to play that card for free, starting off with it. Mm. And there's there's pros and cons of that too, because uh, you only that's, use it once per game. Right. Say so that's a one-time shot, whereas your tunic is going to be every three turns, right? So you're only getting yeah. But if one you're trying resource. to play a four or five-turn game, uh, this one usually is much more beneficial on that, because that way it allows you to get your uh, your combo off pretty efficiently. Four or five-turn uh, game. Yeah, these they ended really quickly. I mean, okay. I think three to five turns was the um, the Vegas kind of thing. Wow! It just okay. It was going super quick. I think it was going super quick during the Florida too. I wasn't keeping track of it, but Is uh, that... you mainly don't want to block with this this deck at all. That seems a little. Uh, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I, I I don't have nearly as much playing experience, but that seems. Um... A little short i mean a little fast right like this is going to be like a super aggro kind of kind of deck it's it's full aggro i and... mean on my sideboard has uh flip flocks but i decided to not use them at all hmm. 
Um, the only reason why I'd even want to use the Flick Flax would be against uh, Bravo or Old Him. But I just had to go full aggro. And in Florida, it did not pay off. But in the past, it has. Uh, just Bravo got a little bit better um, with Tails Aria, with uh, the Sundering Strike, whatever it's called, the new one that hurts you quite a bit. But hmm. ultimately, it's, my goal is to out aggro anybody I play. And it's really hard to do against Briar, but you can still do it. Especially since, you know, we were talking about these these decks. Not everybody plays perfectly either. People make plenty of mistakes. So one mistake from a Briar, one mistake from someone else. And if you play flawlessly, you'll still beat them. Mm -hmm. So you can always watch out for that. Look out for opportunities. Because um, ultimately, you'll, you heard like, oh, Briar kicks ass, Briar kicks ass. We're talking about professional level events right here, right? Now, if you're playing the armories or whatever, not everyone's going to be professional. There's going to be a lot of mistakes made. So... If you can get Katsu down, learn his combos and all that, you can still beat these other decks. Not everybody's professional. And to be honest, it's fun playing this deck. It's quite a, quite a bit of fun. You could do 40 plus damage turns. Oh, Not so common, but you could do a shit ton of damage. Man. Yeah. Yeah, see that's so, that's uh I mean that's a that's a draw right there, right? Like I mean that's like, I don't know of anybody that's doing bigger maybe Kano. <laughs> I mean Kano could do insane damage too. I mean, and another benefit of these guys, too, if you're playing at a professional level event all day, you don't get breaks between matches. So if you play in Agro, you at least get 20 minute breaks. Or hey, minute you breaks. Know, there you go. Yeah. So there there's go. a benefit of that. Yeah. Okay. But the last equipment, I mean, we were on Mask a little bit. It triggers the, the draw card, which is super important. You're probably not going to get that often, too often. But when it does, it's either because the person has a big turn, they don't want to block which is a sign that you need to go really big on them or just you force them to block, which is another really benefit thing because your defense as got to is your offense. You want to do the strongest possible and you want to make them flinch to either block you out. And then that way you don't have to worry about damage coming in your next turn. Or if you do, you just take it and don't worry about it. Mm. Um, and then you got the Snapdragon scalers. Um, those are used more than breeze rider boots because the filler cards are generics. Whereas Breeze Rider Boots only works on uh, combo cards. And it requires the Breeze Rider Boots to require you to get a hit first before the triggers. So this one is uh, more universally used for that reason. But the Breeze Rider Boots do give you an extra damage to block. So that it has its benefits too. And in the future, if they had more combo lines or more ninja cards in the that I'd want to use, then I'd probably go to Breeze Rider Boots over that, Snapdragon. That was going to be my next question. Is there another combo line at all that exists that can be added right now or what do you, what we what you've got in this deck is it or well let's go over to combo line here and i'll, I'll give you suggestions where right, that, that helps fill in that gap because right now there's just quite a few combo lines with ninja and you could play them all but you don't need to there's there's optimization and blues and reds and you're trying to do for example this deck has uh 14 blues the other deck i'm going to show you has 21 blues so there's pros and cons. Another deck plays all three ninja combo lines. Well, the three main ninja combo lines. There's more than that. This one plays the two combo lines. So the two combo lines we have in this deck right here is we have the leg tap one, which goes to leg tap, uh, rise and knee thrust, and then hurricane technique. And the reason why I use that one over uh, blackout kick is because hurricane technique um, has the go again on it, whereas blackout kick does up to seven damage, but it ends. So Hurricane Kick Technique, you could then do another combo line afterwards, or you could set up something on bigger. Mm -hmm. Whereas Blackout Kick, you're usually just done with your turn. So my goal is always put that threat on someone to make sure they're uncertain if they want to block or not. It's really important. And then uh, the reason why the leg tap is used more preferably than, um, let's say, head jab, because leg tap starts off with a four damage attack. Four damage is your uh, annoying attack range. Because mm -hmm. most cards block up for three. Yep. You have defense reactions go up to four. But overall, is if you attack with that, it's forcing someone usually to decide is do I want to block with two cards? Do I want to block with a card and equipment? Whereas the head jabs, three damage. It's free to play, but it doesn't really have that extra threat on there. So. I do want to see something in the future that makes it so it's easier to get the head jabs more damage output or something like that. 
again, you have combo lines in here that pump it up, but I want something to make it more easily uh, threatening. Um, so let me go ahead and talk about a few pumps before I talk about the next combo line on that. But so you have the Lake Town for four. Um, pumps that are really useful in this deck is you have the Plunder Run, which you play from your arsenal. Mm. Uh, gives you plus three attack and also adds the draw um, thing. Oh, so it makes it right. makes sure yeah, make sure that makes them want to block any card you have. This blender run works on your whole turn. Um, the other pump card you have is the razor reflex. Oh man, it's plus three. Yeah, love that and it's card. card. Yeah, it's awesome. And the other pump card you have is uh, ancestral empowerment, which is really good because it gets plus one. So that would be good in that head job situation, as I mentioned. And it replaces itself to it gives you a draw card capability. And the last one is Art of War. Now, some people play three, I play one. Uh, the reason for that is the more pump cards you have, the less actions you have in your deck. And I don't ever want to have a turn where I have more than one Art of War in my hand, mm. right? It's because you got to discard a card, drop, banish two cards, do all the other stuff with like that. If you got two of them in your hand, you might not necessarily have a good amount of resources. You might have more reds. You could end up in a bad situation. So I try to keep my pumps to, I think I have one, four, five, six, seven. I got 10 pumps in my card out of the 60 card deck. That's quite a bit. I don't want anything higher than that because I end up with too many of them in my hand. It's just going to fuck over your turn. It's not mm. going to be good. And then uh, let's go to the next combo line, and then I'll go talk about the fillers after that. So the first combo line was uh, the, the red leg taps. I do include the blue rising knee thrust because you can still play it, and you need your blues, and it's a three defense. So that's there. But with the searching strike line, I do the red and the yellow. Now, I've seen people do blues too, but the reason why the red and yellow are good because it works with your um, chest piece I was talking about. And the four damage and five damage are over the three damage threshold. Um, so the four damage is always good. Five is really good because it puts a lot of threat, but it usually triggers a double block right there. Yeah. So it's a really, really good card. It's fantastic. And even if you don't have the rising, the, the whelming gust wave, whatever, ideally you'll have that. But if you have search and strike and you don't hit, um, but you have whelming gust wave, then you put the extra pressure on it, and you get the four damage one coming in. Then it's also usually a double block, so it's really, really, really awkward to block. That's why it's the best combo line, in my opinion, for ninja right there. Because mm. you always want these and do welding guest waves. Yeah, even You're... a blue welding guest wave encourages block because if it hits, it draws a card. Right. Right. When you're putting your opponent in these constant situations where they have to figure out like one card or two when they're blocking and stuff, it's I mean, it's just annoying, right? Like, it's one it's one more de decision point that they have to uh, make every time. If you're just coming in for two, eh, three, whatever, four. Okay, now I gotta now I gotta think about a second card or gotta waste that equipment. No, I agree. The reason why the the I think Ninja struggle struggles a little bit against Bire right here is that she has a really good turn on you. Uh, she can block out certain strike with one card instead mm. of two, which then puts away a lot of that pressure because she's using but her, uh, still have a really big turn. Right? You still have a really big turn though. You force them to block a few times. They're not going to get as many counters next time. So you can still come back. So all it takes is one off turn on a briar for you to really, really come back. So it's still good to keep that pressure up there. They block with one card. It really sucks. Don't get me wrong, but you can still keep coming at it. And then I'm going to go over in a minute, the ultimate combo for, for Katsu. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, is you have the Surgeon Strike followed by Whelming. So that draws you a card right there. And then you get the Michigan uh, Luginchi release. It's not four damage, but it gets plus one, so it's five. Again, awkward block. And if you hit with that, then you're going to get the Lord of Wind. Now, the Lord of Wind, I usually don't play it for it, but I still draw up on it. One, because you probably got to draw a card from the Whelming Gust Wave. And you probably got to draw a card from a mask, depending if someone wanted to block or not. Because if you're already going this far, you're probably drawing some cards. Or if you haven't drawn off the, the mask yet, you will. If they have already already blocked and you had a natural combo right here. Mm -hmm. um, Lord of Wind gets pumped up 
if you have the surgings, you got the Wellmings and the McGinchy releases in your graveyard. But if you get this early in the game, you're not going to want to play Lord of Wind. But what you're going to do is draw up the Lord of Winds, see how many blues you have, because you probably have not played your uh, Kadachis yet. So then you can do Kadachi, Kadachi. And then this is where you either go in the fielder cards or maybe you get the, the um, kick combo going. So maybe you do a leg tap right there. And that puts pressure on the mask right there. But the, ultimately, the end, the ending card right there you want is, or even like a snatch. Snatch would be perfect right here too because it draws you a card as well. I'm trying to figure out what it's at. Next where is your reflex that? there? There it is. So the snatch right there is also a good card in this combo because you do Kadachi Kadachi after you've done the whole Lord of Win combo. You don't play Lord of Win. You get the blues going. Kadachi Kadachi. You play that card. And then you use your um, your boots. And you play another card. Maybe you get an E-Strike. Play it go again. So this is where the damage starts adding up. And then the ultimate ender for that combo right there is probably going to be... Got to find it right here. Salt in the Wound. Salt in the Wound, yeah. Yeah, so that card is fucking awesome, especially when you get an insane combo right there. Because you got the Surgeon Strike, you got the um, Whelming Gust Wave, the Genshi Release. Um, I think it works for every, every attack that's hit this combo. So you got Kadachi, Kadachi, you got Snatch, <laughs> maybe some other card. So you're already adding seven. Right there, so that could go for like nine damage right there. Again, that depends if they blocked it or not. Right. But that's you add up to like nine damage right there on that that card. Most time it can be between like five and seven damage on it, but that really adds up damage quite a bit right there, too. Um, especially when you're playing against, let's say Bolton or smaller decks who do not want to block. Mm -hmm. They've already gotten this far, so they're not going to block, and you might finish them. Mm. And I've I've come back on games quite a bit on this because. Either you're wiping out their whole hand, and you're doing damage, and you're drawing cards, and then you're setting up for your next turn, and they have nothing, and then you can just go full ham on them. And then you just so even if you do this against buyer, it's gonna be really hard for them to come back on you. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the only the caveat is mentioned is buyer still has a favor on you, but if you're playing armory and the people aren't really like efficient at it or to make mistakes or over block or wrongly block, you come back. Mm. But the flaws the ninja does have, though, is you have to have those starter cards or some fielder cards. Uh, so me, my that is ninja has a crutch, whereas not all his cards have go again, but if you play them in the combo order, it has go again. So you have your uh, leg taps right here. So you have three that initially have go again. Then you got six of the certain strikes that have go again. So you have nine cards to start off with for all your combos, hmm. right? You might not always have those. Or you might have some other combinations of it. So there's that. Um, you have other cards that have go again, but they have the risks of being blocked and stopped. So this is what I'm talking about the filler cards, which could probably be replaced again in the future with either different combo lines or alternate combo lines in the future. But I think Ninja needs better starting cards to have more consistent go agains. Um, for example, you get Soul Bleed Strike right there. It's four damage. The rest of the combo line, in my opinion, sucks. I don't really like it because I'm not much of a blocker. Again, combo line is the crane dance and then um, the fine center, whatever. I don't like that combo. Hmm. Uh, it's more of a defensive setup. It's not much damage. But this is a four damage attack. You usually play against a very aggro decks who don't want to block. And then, But you got to keep in mind is if someone blocks it, it ends your turn. So you probably want to do Kadachi Kadachi that. And then you're happy at least for blocking a card. Um, but if you have, like, a, a Razor Reflex on you, that puts 7 damage, which is also very awkward. So this is a Soul Bleed Strike, which is good for now, but that's something that can easily be replaced. Um, but it's also good to have your Snapdragon Scalers available, because a lot of you play cards like that, put pressure on, and not worry about losing your turn, because you can still have the option to do it. Right. Same thing with Snatch, too. Um, sometimes you'll have a shitty hand, you don't have much on it, so you might want to start your hand off with Snatch, or if you're lucky, you have a plunder on the snatch, and or you have a plunder on the snatch to like razor. So there's a lot of things you might have that are kind of like awkward, but then you can make your turn still 15 plus damage, hmm. you know, because the plunder runs plus three or seven. It's already 10 damage attack. 
Um, they got to block it out. If not, they're you're drawing two cards off that. So then you got two cards, and you have whatever cards in your hand. You could then start a combo off with Kadachi's Droth Mask and all that. So there's a lot of like workarounds you do with Ninja. You're like, oh man, it's offhand. You're like, well, you did 15 damage to me. I'm like, yeah, but I want to do more. So <laughs> there's those, uh, you know, different caveats right there. Awesome. Uh, Command and Conquer and E Strike are ones I would not re- mind replacing in the future. Uh, Command and Conquer I really like against Bolton decks and Bravo because Bravo and Bolton really keep cards in their arsenal for quite a bit. Mm. Um, Bolton, they're yeah, not, they're but, not in the sideboard though. They're in the uh, the main deck. Yep, yeah, they're in the main deck because I only have two. Because you still nobody likes Command and Conquer, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Nobody wants their arsenal so, trashed. Yeah, no one likes Command and Conquer. So two are fine, but if you're playing Command and Conquer, you're not going big. You're doing Kadachi, Kadachi, maybe Leg Tap, Command and Conquer. You're not doing a really big turn because there's no way to give it go again in this deck, mm. right? So it's always you end your turn that way. If you end your turn that way, you're trying to get rid of Arsenal, you're trying to make sure it hits or they block twice, or if it does hit, you're trying to get the mass trigger so you can put something in your Arsenal. Hmm. So that's why I would not mind replacing that in the future, but still keep it optional for like, you know, Rangers, Bravo, Bolton, Bolton especially. Yeah. And then E-Strike is a flexible card, but I could easily see this be replaced with something else in the future. Because seven damage is annoying, but it doesn't have go again. Usually, you want to go wide and put the pressure on it. So, if you're doing seven damage to someone, they're like, All right, you're doing seven damage to me, but I know you're not going again unless you have a razor reflex or you have the boots. But you're not always putting that pressure on them because the damage is damage. You're like, Okay, damage, I lived. Now I'm going to go big at you. But if, if you did damage with the option of go again, so you make it five, which is still good, or drawing the card, that's that's the risk right there, too. But when you make it five go again, I'd rather have a ninja card that has five go again versus something else. So even though I like E Strike, it's still even though it's free to play, it's not free because you have to put a card in the bottom of your deck. Right. So if you had a ninja card that does five damage, well, there are some other options, don't get me wrong. But they don't have the built in go again or whatever. And they cost one, whereas the zero cost, so this could still be used for Gadachis, or it could be discarded for your uh Katsu ability. Which is a key part of this deck too. There's a lot of zero cost cards because you want to be able to use your uh, Katsu trigger on it, which allows you to hit somebody, search for a uh, uh, combo card essentially. Yeah, and so I'm just sitting here like staring at this thing, trying to figure out like how do you get more razor reflexes in there? Like which cards do you take out? <laughs> well, the cards I don't mind changing out in the future would be Command Conquers, E Strikes. Soul yeah. Beat Strikes and uh, Art of War. I'm not a huge fan. Nice. Those ones I would not mind switching out. Torn of Tempo as well. With the five go again, same same flaw as Soul Beat Strike. It has to hit to get go again. It just it feels to me like if you added more Razor Reflexes, it would make this deck more smooth. Uh, you can, but it's only giving it plus two. So you got the three reds right there. Yeah. If you had the yellow ones, don't get me wrong, they're not bad, but you're not putting much damage pressure on it too. Hmm. And what's blue? Is so it, if uh, you're doing like one? a, if you're doing, for example, a four damage attack, you have plus three, it's seven. So you're keeping that awkward status right there. Hmm. But if you're doing a four and add plus two, you're at six damage. Now you're at the double block threshold or easier to stop. Gotcha. So the, so don't get me wrong, yellow's not bad. I'm not against yellow, but that's kind of the reason behind it. Yeah. Okay. But they might add more options like that in the future. So, you know, WTR, ARC, and crew out of print, it'd be nice to see, like, you know, ninja-specific um, reactions. Yeah, I mean, you have, you already have is coming. So. Yep. You got Everfest, and you got a set uh, in Q2 next year. So we have a lot of cards coming, not just yeah. Everfest. So we got the Ancestral Empowerment, which is ninja-based. They'd be excited to see whatever ninja base cards or ninja talent base cards they have in the future. Yeah, that. So, anyways, the main part of this deck is you don't want to block. A lot of your cards are two blocks. You do have some threes. Um, the only time you do want to block if there's on hit effect. For example, if they're hitting you and it makes you discard a card, mm. you'll know, minus will block that. Um, I don't include any uh, null rune blocking because you're just taking the damage on that so that's kind of your um threshold 
against Kano, you're just racing, going as fast as you can. I mean, pretty much racing as much as you can, anyone. Yeah, how's this match against uh, Bravo or Oldham? I have not played against Oldham yet. Bravo, it's it's not in your favor. Hmm. No, you it's really have to get Bravo off. And... Yeah, because not really set up to block that much with this deck, so it's not really that good. I did, again, sideboard some flick flacks and all that, but you do that, you take away your, your main purpose of your deck, which is to go fast. Hmm. So ultimately, your your best bet against Bravo is hoping they don't uh, it's not intimidate. Hoping they don't um, make you dominate. Hopefully, they don't dominate you the whole time and just make you. Hopefully, they don't threaten pummel every turn. Yeah, spinal crush <laughs> is also not your friend either. Yeah. So this is the deck that did pretty well overall. Again, it still has a very positive win rate. It does pretty well against Prism. Does really good against Bolton. Bolton's still scary, but that's where you want the extra command and conquer for. Because I'm saying there, a lot of there's a Sabres Bolton that's pretty popular, and they're trying to um, OTK you one one turn kill you mm. essentially with all the pummels. I think it's called Lumina Ascension, and they'll, they'll sort out an Arsenal or their hand. You don't want them to keep that, so you right. want to go with the command and conquer and three them. So what I mean, what about against Lexi? You want command and conquer for the, for her too? Right? Yes, you, you do want that against Lexi too. Um, I, you, want I, to, you want to destroy her uh, arsenal. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd mentioned that old other ranger, but uh, yeah, whatever. Can't even remember her name now. You know, yeah. maybe they'll make those old heroes at Thompson <laughs> in the future, right? I, you know, actually, uh, my prediction is that they're going to find some way to make the elements apply to the old heroes. I feel like um i mean they'll come with a handicap right like you have to somehow pay into it or something i don't know but there's gonna be some there's gonna be some way there'd be some way i mean they could easily just say katsu the wonder or katsu the wind waker you know they could they could change his uh subtitle right there and they're like all right well now we're gonna give him new text on his hero card so now you get your favorite hero and now he's got some uh added benefits or, or there might be equipments they add on to, which gives you the uh, negative aspects to you're saying. If they if they change the hero text, though, then it's almost like making a new hero. And they said they aren't going to add any new heroes for forever fast. So I'm, I don't know. Yeah, what I like about that aspect, though, is it still allows you to use the, the Katsu specializations. Hmm. So even if like the old hero is no longer viable for whatever reason, they can still fresh up the older hero. Maybe it's not the same. But you still use their specializations. Because mm. right here, you have the two of them that can't be used by any other ninja. You got the Lord of Wind, and you got the McGinchy release. That's a great point. When he, uh, when he's got all of his points or whatever, and he's no longer allowed to play in tournaments, then those cards would be dead unless there was another Katsu out there. Adult yeah, Katsu so or whatever. That's where I see them changing their card. Might be essentially a new hero. I still allows you to use the old cards that are um, no longer viable to anyone else. Okay. All right. So there's not much else to talk about this deck, except you don't want to block. You want to get your combo lines. And another thing that's really important that still Fur taught me, um, I did some tutoring sessions with him too, because he's pretty good. Um, I highly recommend it if you get a hold of him. Is that sometimes you don't want to keep getting extra damage in there. You want to set it for your next turn. So let's say I've got a really big turn. And let's say I still have a leg tap in my hand. Probably better to put that in my arsenal. Because now I have a much bigger chance next turn to get a leg tap combo off instead of start from scratch and not have an arsenal. Hmm. So it's better to have the five in my my um five cards instead of the four. Because it lets me more get more explosive, put more pressure on. But if you're at the point where you're practically killing them and forcing them to block two cards with it, then doing the extra damage and totally destroying their turns good too. It really depends. Uh, sometimes you really want to block, especially against Prism. I forget her main Herald card, whatever, that if it hits, draws two cards. You don't want to get that off because then it'll go big on you. So you got to favor against her, but you got to be careful on some of the cards she does. Now, I'm going to show you a second deck, which I made strictly to counter Bolton. Uh, I got second place in RTN with it. I played against a chain. And the guy got like, the guy I played against got. Uh, top eight at the Vegas calling. So he's really good, hmm. but I fucking surprised the hell out of him because he was not expecting my combo. Cause it was not a, not a main deck. 
It's not as good, but it's fun, and I want to see this deck used more in the future, either armories or maybe it's useful in the future if Ninja has more two-cost two attacks in their deck. So what I'm pulling right here is I call the Pummel Katsu. <laughs> nobody, nobody plays Pummel Katsu. Nobody. But a lot of my meta locally, the armory was Bolton. And I was telling you, I wanted to get rid of his cards from his arm from his arsenal. Uh -huh. Nobody fucking expected the pummel in this deck. So whenever I pulled the pummel out, they're thrown off. And pummel is good against anybody. Mm -hmm. But the problem with this deck, it's really resource intensive. So the last one I showed you was 14 blues. Uh, this one's 21 blues. Because oh, wow. you got the more two cost cards in it. Yeah. Makes um, sense. this deck though, the main difference is though with this one is I'm using Breeze Rider boots since I think all my cards are pretty much ninja based instead of the other one. And then I have more blues, and I got the head jab combo too. So I got the three red head jabs in addition to the blue ones. Hmm. Um. And again, I used the blue head jobs instead of like fine center earlier in the last deck because it always gives you go again. It doesn't block as well, but it's a blue that threatens the mass trigger and stuff like that too. Um, I use three open centers. Again, it's not as good as the other deck damage output wise, but you can put a lot of pressure on discard cards with pummel. So you got the head jab, open center to uh, pummel. That's a good combo right there. And then if you have the right cards or got it right, you can then use a zero cost fluster fist. It's a high damage combo right there. Only costs four to play. The problem with this deck though, the biggest challenge with it though, is that heart and cross trap does not work on the head jab combo. Because this only does minus two for the next card you play. And the first card you play is a head jab, it's cost zero. Mm. The other counter too is the head jab as mentioned beforehand, it's hard to get a hit. It's easy to block mm -hmm. block one card usually right uh, unless you have like a um unless you got a razor reflex or the um, ancestral empowerment you're gonna have a hard time getting it through so you kind of need like a natural open center so you might want to keep open center in your arsenal and all that who knows another thing too is the pummel costs two mm -hmm. so you can create very awkward hands so this is this is more suitable for armory than it is professional play but the surprise in someone's face, your opponent's face, when they see Pummel get them, it's the fucking best feeling in your life. <laughs> Especially if they don't know you're playing this deck. Because, as I was saying, you got head jab, open center, Pummel. Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to necessarily leave Pummel in their um, arsenal unless you have a lot of two-cost cards. Because hmm. it can get stuck there. Right. But if you add the extra two-cost cards, so you got three open centers, you got two to three command and conquers. Those are your two-cost attacks. That's it, right? So this could get stuck in there. Uh, that's why I don't put three pummels. But if I was playing a bolt in, I might put a yellow open center in there too, and another pummel to make up for it. So there's all that. So my first road to nationals, I got second place with this. I do admit though, I played mostly bolt in that day, and this deck was meant to destroy saber boltons. So it kind of worked out my favor. Hmm. I got wrecked by chain though at the end. Wow. Oh, yeah. But that this is this is pre tails when I played this deck. Before the seats ban. Yeah. So, but I can see this deck being useful if uh, ninjas have more two cost attacks in the future. Maybe mm -hmm. a different ninja style in the future too. All that. So, this is more fun. And the goal against Bolton, as I mentioned beforehand, is you want to get them to discard cards and you want to get them to get rid of their arsenal. This is both. Because Bolton usually doesn't block, same as Katsu. And if you can palm mold them on a command and conquer, not only are you threatening to get rid of their um, arsenal, they might double block it, but you might as well get rid of two limited ascensions, which I have done before in the past since won the game. So this is pretty good. You have less uh, Razor Reflex in here. Hmm. And I don't see it in here, but I've also used um, other cards, which I did not mention earlier. Is a Pounding Gale. is a good substitute in there too, especially when playing uh, Breeze Rider Boots. Because Breeze, Breeze Rider Boots gives combos go again. So this could be like a filler card right there where it gives you uh, go again. So even if you have a combo on that and you use, break the boots, you just keep playing the whatever cards for free. So that's why Fluster Fist is really good and all that hmm. there too. So again, this, this X9 is good, but you, you can pummel, actually, you can pummel this too. Search and Strikes. 
So really, really cool card. I don't have this in here because I was not using it in time. But you can use uh, Plunder Run, Surgeon Strike, Pommel. They're probably going to want to block it like with three cards anyways. You Pommel it, you make them lose it all the land. They got nothing left in their hand. You draw a card off the Plunder Run, and you play the Woman Gust Wave. You can go as big as you want at that point, and then uh, they're not going to be able to stop you. They lost their arsenal, and they don't have their hand. Yeah, I can definitely see where you're going to need to have those blues in there for uh, just so that you can draw since you can pull that off. So this is a good deck if someone's not expecting it. You not have as much damage output, but you have uh, some more unexpected plays because people are like, oh, you're just doing your combos, you're doing combos. Yeah. And then you do the, the pummel, and they're like, what the fuck you just do? <laughs> That's the best reaction. This game's not only about professional play. So yeah. that gets fucking people said, this is a very competitive game. But it's good to have those fun moments. And then I'm telling you, when I play against a chain guy, very good guy. I told you, you got top eight in the calling. When I pummeled him, he was like, what the fuck is going on here? Because he's like, <laughs> he's like, oh, what, what, what's this guy got? What's this guy? What's he got? Yeah. Pummel was not the, he did not even cross That was not on the list of expectations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's one yeah. of my favorite uh, reactions I ever saw. That's fun, man. Good times. Yeah, you should definitely uh, check out the video that uh, it released uh, today as far as real time goes. Um, we talked a lot about Pummel. <laughs> it's, a good card. it's a good card. Very uh, powerful. Yeah. I, mean, I hate it when it's used against me. So like, if you hate it, you know you want to use it if you can. Uh -huh. Makes sense. I mean, another alternative is to use the yellow Pummel too. You don't have to have red. Mm -hmm. um, but I like to have the extra damage output, especially against uh, defense decks. Yeah. But it's also good against Bravo, too, because um, Bravo doesn't want to use their um, arsenal all the time because they're trying to set up for bigger attacks later on. Mm. And then this 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 really threatens them with the Command and Conquer. Because usually they easily block out Command and Conquer, put a palm on it, and they're not ready for it. They lost their arsenal. Mm. Makes sense, yeah. So, so I haven't played this deck for a while, but... This is also something I might want to tweak out once Everfest comes out or the next Ninja talents come out. Another card I don't yeah. mention in here is you also have Flying Kick, which is, uh, I think, 7 damage, cost 2. You got to play on a third attack or higher. That could also be used with the um, Pummel as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could see where this one would be a really fun deck to... Uh... Update with the next uh, you know, next couple of cards coming out of Ever Everfest here. You'll have, you'll have a lightning ninja in no time, I can tell. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited what they they have. I mean, we've only seen few, two talents or three talents so far. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff coming, right? So who knows what it'll be? It's hard to yep. uh, hard to really predict, but uh, but the main thing too too is that those filler cards I was talking about. Those are all cards I don't mind being swapped out in the future. E strike. Command and well, Command and Conquer is fun, but E Strike, Command and Conquer. Um, Command and Conquer seems like, or anything that you can use to strip the opponent's arsenal seems like you got to have something like that in your sideboard, if not in the deck. But they might have another alternative that does it or something better. Right, right. right. So threatening arsenal is always a good option, but maybe there's something that slows them down, or you know, there's a million different options they could add. Yeah. So people are kind of married to Command and Conquer. It is good, but they might have other alternatives that are really good for your deck. Yep. So yep. depends what goal your deck is. So they start off with a lot of generics, first two sets or three sets, because they're trying to build out the game. Tails didn't have any generics. So I wouldn't be surprised if they start limiting more and more generics going on in the future, because it's easier to control and tame the, the meta when you don't have so many generics. Yeah, you start throwing new generics in, in there. It's I mean, there can be very widespread effects. And I mean, you've seen some of the bans that have already happened, right? I mean, Throwing a brutality, like, yeah. Oh, that, that's a fun, still a good card to have just for uh, historic sake. Oh yeah, yeah. I slap them up and hand them out as prizes, right? <laughs> nice. Like the first band card, well, except for Go Bananas, I guess technically, but yeah, they had to ban that one just in case anybody thought to try and actually play it at a tournament. Yeah, that, that's more super casual. <laughs> but you know what? I'm surprised you haven't done it on your channel yet. Because that, that one that one's like a monster to rip packs. Yeah, you know, probably should. I don't know. We're uh, looking at different uh, formats and trying new things out. I mean, we're doing these deck tech videos now and uh, 
try and yeah, uh, I can see ultimate pit fight with a uh, go bananas and then encourage you to rip midway through the games. That'd be fun as hell. Yeah, I actually should yeah. do something like that. Good idea. Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, any uh, parting thoughts on uh, on Katsu? Are there other Katsu builds that you think people should be looking at? Turtle well, Katsu. There are. I don't like blocking that much, so I, I do like those super aggressive decks. I'm also a Kano player, which I don't like to block much either. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you'll see in the Arsenal, you got Unmovable, which you might want to put one or two of those against a Bravo player or something like that. And you have the super defensive uh, Ninja decks too. I mean, you could go the full uh, um, Flick Flack route and all that too. So there's a lot of different builds you can do with uh, Ninja. Um, so I see a lot of adaptability in the future. Um, I like to be aggressive. My, my, my idea is aggressive is my defense, but Ninja could go super defensive as well too. Yeah. So there's so many different routes to go. It'll be interesting to see how they can maybe better mitigate arcane damage in the future too. So I'd like to see all our heroes get our options to block arcane just besides null rooms and arcane barrier. Um, yeah. I think that would really change the meta quite a bit there too. Yeah. Uh, Cause right now there's only limited amounts of way to block arcane. Mm-hmm. So if they add more ways to block it, um, that or to mitigate it or barrier or whatever you can do against it, then it allows more options too. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with arcane in the future. Yeah, your point earlier about uh, aggro decks versus um, like turtling decks, defensive decks. I mean, if the length of the round isn't long enough, if you have any, I mean, if you're a newer player and you're trying to. Work your, th- work your way through one of these tournaments, like, aggro is probably the best way to go, because, like, if you're trying to do a defensive deck, you're going to run out of time, and you know, when you get a um, when, when the time runs out and nobody's dead, that's a, that's a draw, which is a loss for both players, right? So, it's kind of a feel-bad. That's why, like, even if you're going to tournament, like, a calling, you don't need an invitation to, but get your practice in beforehand. You have so many armies every week. You got Rota Nationals. You got Pro Quest coming up. You got Skirmishes. There's so many chances to practice your deck out. I mean, you shouldn't time out for the most part. In aggro, you're almost never timing out. Yeah, aggro, um, I can't imagine, but in a, in turtle turtle deck, seems like I don't know. Well, yeah. you can do aggro versus turtle, and then they block you out each turn, so that could uh, lead to a timeout um, if they're not putting the pressure back. Um, but ultimately is aggro i love it it's a lot of fun i mean you block here and there when you do block it's a big decision point right you can really strategize your blocking you have a shitty turn next turn and you don't want to give them a special effect you, you block it out uh but most time you're just trying to attack and then fuck things up which is why i find a lot of fun awesome right on well, Michael, this has been a pretty, uh, pretty good uh, run through Katsu. I'll be, I'll be curious to look at a uh, defensive Katsu at some point too, and uh, get, get like a the wider picture, if you will. But uh, yeah, defensive Katsu was super popular uh, yeah. earlier this year. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, and uh, thanks for coming out and being on Flesh and Blood on Seals, and uh, we'll do this again sometime. Maybe, uh, maybe I can hop on your podcast sometime. And, Talk about ripping stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you got the podcast on Spotify, and then it's also streamed on YouTube. I'll be doing some ripping on boxes soon. And I did my first video last week where I shit off uh, quite a few slabs. So oh, if you want to see some slab glory. Yeah, you want to see something spicy, go check out that video. Uh, <laughs> quite a few slabs. <laughs> yeah, I should have more next year. So <laughs> Good times. Awesome. All right. Well, Michael, thank you. Take care. You too. Bye. All right.